like to call the meeting to order. Would everyone please stand and join us for the flag salute? Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Hope everybody had a nice break. Break? Or not. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. um, all right, I'd like to report out on our closed session. Uh, item A was public employee performance evaluation, government code section 54957, title superintendent, information exchange, no action taken. And then item B is a student matter. Um, and do I have a uh, pursuant to education code section 48918A? Uh, do I have a motion there? I do. I move that students 3002010, student 4002079, and student 3005030 have been found to have successfully completed their rehabilitation plan as specifi specified in their respective board assigned expulsion orders, and that the order of expulsion for students. 3002010, and 3005030 be terminated. Congratulations to those students. Yeah. Um, and no action with regard to student 4002094 is being taken at this time. Any I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then the third item was a public employee discipline dismissal release, government code section 54957, information exchange, no action taken. Okay, let's so move down to the approval of the minutes of our uh, December 8th meeting. I move that we approve the minutes of our December 8th meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we'll move down to the approval of the agenda and consent agenda. Can I get a motion there? I move we approve the agenda and consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Okay, this is a roll call. Alicia? Aye. Jacqueline? Aye. Andy? Aye. Terry? Aye. And I'm I. <coughs> okay, uh, item E, public interest reports presentations, and we will not have a, a student report until the 26th. Um, so we'll move on to an update on Measure U. And we have Mr. David Winnegar here. Good evening, trustees. Let us know what's going on. Uh, tonight, I brought the architects along, and they're going to do an update on where we're at. It's a milestone uh, where we brought uh, the major U up to this point. So I'd like to start off with Joe Wilcox, and uh, he can give you a, an update where we're where we're headed. Thank you. Thank you, David. Got it. So trustees, it's nice to be here this evening, and we thought uh, it would be nice to give the board kind of a snapshot of what we've been doing up to, up to now. And um, <clears throat> first of all, on November 19th, we had that community overview meeting at main school, which was really well attended, and uh, I got to meet all the committee members from my schools. And uh, the second thing that we've been doing is you're going to see from Robert a schedule for all the meetings we're going to have for the next five meetings at all the sites. And... Uh, my hat goes off to Robert because he's done a very good job with that schedule because it wasn't easy to do. Um, we've prepared all the site graphics, and you're going to see some of those at the end of the show that how we're going to deal with the committees. And uh, it's basically ink on paper at this time, so we can do whatever we want as long as we stay within budget. Um, and then the other thing we've done is Robert, David, and I, over the last three or four weeks, every Friday, we've had a planning meeting where we've met with all the engineers because... When you come to modernization, a lot of the money goes for civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and so on. And um, Robert and I and David also went up into the warehouse and went through the drawings and did an archive search of all the existing past drawings. And we've kind of got a plan on what drawings to scan and what not. It's going to take some months to do that. And one of the things that we didn't list on here I thought of today is that David has ordered topographic surveys for all the sites because I've actually had some sites where the property lines, not for this district, the for other districts where the property lines weren't where they thought they were, and it affected <laughs> building additions and code analysis and so on. And, and please interrupt me at any time. 
Um, what happens next is uh, actually on Thursday and Friday, we start off, I start off at my at two sites and so does Robert. Uh, we start beginning the planning for each campus. Uh, David's gonna start the eligibility process with school facility consultants, I believe it is, David, for if there's a new bond, if the bond passes. Um, we're gonna start regular communications. I think you've hired Stephanie Bortot to help you with communications and a website, I believe. David Hetyunk will start the uh, ed spec process and Robert and I will be involved in all those meetings as well. And um, that involves the, uh, the staff, that involves uh, the t all the teachers and so on and administration. Um, and, and I'm sure David will be able to report on that more in detail. The next slide is really kind of how the architect looks at it is we, we see the ed spec and we interpret it into a classroom specification. So for example, if you're designing a culinary arts facility, that ed spec is a lot different than if you're designing a digital media lab. So it tells us what the physical requirements are for all these various spaces. And at the high school, it varies because the spaces may change over periods of time. So it gets a little more complicated for the secondary schools. And this is an example of how we had a powwow and we just sketched out all these various ideas and then we brought it back with a drawing to scale to show what would fit and what wouldn't fit. Uh, at the first meeting, we talked about this also in the November 19th meeting, is the role of the site committees. And um, basically our role is to keep everything within budget. So we're gonna continually be a broken record and saying these are great ideas, but we need to look and see how we can keep it within budget and how we can keep it within the, the board approved uh, bond list. Let's see if I've skipped anything here. I think Robert? We have our agendas all set up. Robert, I've been talking about the agendas. We, in my office, I have a notebook for every site and I have the agenda set for the next five meetings, uh, sign up sheets. We're gonna have meeting minutes that we're gonna review every time. We're gonna give the sites homework to out and look at spaces if they want to. After the November 19th, we were approached by the Summerlin School Committee early and they wanted to meet before the holidays. So David and I made time to meet with them. We walked the site. One of the parents there actually went to the Dos Pueblos Engineering Academy, he mentioned that on the 19th meeting that he really liked that building. And so he's met with uh, Omir there, and actually that's the building I did, but just, it was just a coincidence. And he's already visited the site, so we're gonna talk about various spaces that they can visit. Um, I know that the district's looking at uh, Gen 7 portables, and there's some of those up in Napomo um, that I've seen, I have, we didn't do them, but we told some of the parents that they can go up and take a look at those. And I'm rambling here, so Robert, I think you're ready. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And uh, thank you, board and administration, for lending me your ear. Um, moving on to this, let me see if I've got this slide clicker right. Is it this one? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, what our task is for the next, uh, essentially, next six months moving forward. And we're going to be beginning this, be beginning this process on Thursday. And we're calling it conceptual planning. Basically, it's a big picture look at all of your campuses. Uh, as, as, you know, as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of complexity in these jobs. A lot of, a lot of buildings that have been built over the, on all these campuses over periods of time. And uh, we can't just start uh, putting buildings down on the site uh, hap haphazardly. Uh, it's very important to take a look at this in a big picture fashion, make sure that we don't paint ourselves into a corner um, and uh, doing things that uh, may require, um, uh, you know, later having to re rework it. So we, we're trying to avoid that and uh, we're taking this process we think is a very prudent way to approach it. Uh, some of our basic concerns um, that we're going to be looking at, there's, this is an incomplete list. Uh, it's actually a much larger list of concerns that we're going to be looking at, but these are some big bullet points here um, and uh, uh, some considerations. So we're looking at uh, uh, refinement of budgets for projects is basically what we're doing throughout, throughout the jobs is we're, we're basically taking uh, all of these different considerations uh, and refining them. Um, we're looking at site security. That's a, that's a hot topic these days, um, it, uh, of these times. So we're obviously going to be paying attention to that. Uh, location of buildings on site are um, 
uh, that's another thing that we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of existing buildings on these sites, and we're constrained in many senses. It's not a, a bare plot of land that we're dealing with. So uh, we're going to be looking at where to place buildings, and in many cases in jobs like this, we're looking at where we can't put buildings as, as a way of looking at it. So that's one thing. Uh, parking and traffic flow is another major consideration. Um, you know, where the parking, where the parking is now, how can it be improved for more efficient uh, connection of the vehicles to uh, the buildings? Uh, and then also how to separate uh, pedestrian uses from the vehicles, things like that. And that really goes along with site safety and things like site security. So those two things are somewhat married in many ways. And then uh, technology needs, uh, that's something that we're going to have to plan for the now and then also try to anticipate the future when it comes to technology. And then, of course, phasing of the projects is uh, we have to figure out which projects should be built first? What built projects does it make most sense to build first? And which does it make which projects does it make sense to build last? So moving on. Uh, now this conceptual site planning that we're doing takes places in takes place in a number of phases. That little chart that you see on the right of the screen um, shows the complexity involved because of all the different school sites that we're meeting with in the various types of meetings. Uh, included within these, we call them design phases. Within these des design phases, we have uh, meetings, we have work periods, and, uh, and, and then we move on to the next phase. Uh, in the phase one, which we're actually starting on Thursday, is our first set of meetings. Uh, you know, our objectives are to try to uh, identify uh, the major needs and problems of all the campuses and the best way to find that out as we have always found out is by meeting with the people who are on the campuses and live with it day to day so we could really get a lot of work done by meeting with those people right away so that's what we wanted to do first off is have a site, a site tour with our site committees and we're just going to gather information from that during those uh, during those um, meetings, basically, uh, we're touring the campus, as I mentioned. Uh, there are handouts. The handout is the agenda for that particular meeting. And we're going to be reviewing the bond, the, the board-approved bond project lists and budgets during one set of the meetings. And also let the, uh, the site committees know about what the project list is that has been approved by the board and get everybody on the same page. And uh, my favorite part is that we get to give the teachers homework because this is like a turning of the tables for us. So we get to give the teachers homework this time to have them conduct a little independent research of project ideas. We're, we're giving them a chance to find some inspiration. Let us know what, give us some guidance. Um, and we are looking for a collaborative effort between uh, the, both of the architecture firms and the schools and uh, and the district in order to get to get the best ideas going, uh, and then on our term our, on our homework side, we're going to be preparing our own idea boards for inspiration as well, based upon the bond project list. Moving on to the next phase of work, um, we're again meeting again uh, afterwards after we've done our homework. And we're going to be develop the objective of that set of meetings and work period is to develop a preliminary adjacency slash relationships for projects. That's kind of a mouthful. Uh, what I mean by that, what we mean by adjacency, what we architects mean by adjacency is essentially uh, what places, what spaces and spaces and uses in a building need to be next to each other for good communication relationships, and what which spaces and uses in a building should be separated. So that's kind of what we're looking at. It's the, the, um, the beginnings of design. And we're also developing a priority list as well because uh, we want to make sure that, you know, even though we want to plan to get everything on the wish list the, um, done in, in this bond uh, and keep a really good eye on the budget, it is helpful to have a priority list. Um, moving on to our activities, in order to do that, one of the handouts is in all these me in all these projects, I mean, excuse me, in all of these meetings, are reviewing what happened during the last meeting with minutes, 
and we're going to be doing some brainstorming um, using enlarged campus maps of which uh, Joe's going to show you later um, our starting point for that session uh, what we're going to be using what kind of tools are going to be using uh, for that pr uh, that uh, process and then we're going to be discussing campus priorities and um, the homework for this set of meetings is uh, for our project program management consultant who's doing the educational specs uh, would, would be to develop some preliminary versions of those for later review and what we're going to be doing as architects the two architecture firms are going to be developing preliminary program maps in other words we're taking the stuff that's been verbally communicated to us about what spaces are good and what isn't working what particular uh, uses and activities are incongruous with each other we'll take those all those things and we'll try to develop them into a graphic form because that's the way we like to present things we we think it's helpful to to convert things into graphics and once we convert things into graphics we can move a little bit forward in our design so moving into phase three I'm so sorry that this is such a long-winded thing but it, it is a, a long process that we're going through here um, with this particular phase of work is we're basically discussing the possible revisions that we're needing on the ed specs in the program um, after everybody's had a chance and you'll see in it's probably hard to read on the right side but all of these work periods have review periods built into them for the for the school sites to look at and and, and also for the architects uh, to work and the activities uh, there again um, mainly were develop or reviewing the program map at that point and we're reviewing the preliminary educational sp specifications developed by the the program management consultant and the homework here is to have the site committees uh, go back and have a little time to digest all this information and then come back to us and review it later and the, at this point the the, head, the ed, educational specifications will be finalized and uh, we will go off uh, the architects and uh, we'll go off and start developing our conceptual site plans so as you can see this thing is developing it's like a photo and a developer we're kind of just um, developing this thing from the bottom up and then it's getting uh, more and more uh, a little more detail as we go along now we're starting to develop uh, conceptual site plans and, and also looking at uh, the budgets as well because we're starting to feed that through the mechanism to see how all of these ideas within the parameters of the bond list uh, fit into our overall budget. And phase four, what we're doing is our objectives at least, are to review the site plan and look at possible re revisions to that. Uh, also the project priorities and, and the profiles as well so we're going to be reviewing all these things we're going to develop the phasing of the projects meaning which projects go first and which go last and which are in the middle uh, we'll be reviewing the preliminary budgets and the priority lists as well and then uh, our homework at that point will be uh, again the site committees will have another review period to look at everything and digest it and give us comments by a particular date so at this point the site committee's work are, are starting to starting to wrap up in, in, in April we're going to get their final comments at that point and then we're going to turn around and we're going to present um, the preliminary site plans the priorities and the budgets to the board um, in that month and then after that after we present that for your feedback we'll go into a second round of budgeting on the job and do some further development and refinement on that after your feedback and then moving on to basically uh, phase number five here is that we're trying to get a consensus on the direction of the final site plans and consensus is something that we're, we've been working for all this all these different milestones and phases of this work it's always been something that we've been trying to keep focused on is gaining consensus so we're trying to get a, uh, a final direction on this, the, the site plans the final project budgets and the final prior priorities and reviewing all of these items and then we go back and we get to finalize our work um, by 523 
And at that point, we present the final site plans to the board. And then our final, our final phase, number six, is to make our final revisions. Uh, and and uh, at that point, present the final project lists and budgets to the board. And that would be in June. So it's it's very um, it's a very intricate thing that we've developed here. Hopefully not some sort of Rube Goldberg kind of mechanism here, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I think what we've done is is we've plotted out a course uh, for success, and uh, we hope that uh, in collaboration with all the team members that we could have very successful start of all these projects. And once we get our approval on all those conceptual things, then we can go off and start working on the individual projects in detail, construction documents, governing authority approvals, things like that. Great. Okay. I, I just, I gotta commend you for putting together, this is a very, con, very mm -hmm. easy to understand and follow um, document here. So, mm -hmm. good job. Hey, thank you, yeah. yeah. Joe? Yeah. <clears throat> As Robert was talking about homework, it made me realize too that one thing he didn't mention is the architect's homework will be to go back and talk to these engineering consultants again. I know I kind of keep talking about that, but that is, with modernization, the engineering side is at least 50% of the costs. So we don't want to start putting a new science building on a campus where there's a 20-inch high-pressure gas line and have to go up and redesign it. Um, the next slides that we're going to show are some of the campus maps. And Robert, I'm not sure, do they scroll through or? So we've, we've developed campus maps for all the sites, and I think they're on an automatic pilot there, but we're also going to take a Google Earth map and have it on a 30 by 42 print of a color map. I've, I've found that that's really very, very helpful to see where all the roads are, the access roads, the parking, and so on. We take these also and we print them on 30 inches by 42 inches and put them on boards. We'll take a couple in for each meeting. We'll take what we call our flimsy paper and tape. We'll roll up our sleeves. We'll start doing sketches and we'll say, what do you think of this idea? And then we'll get feedback. And what do you think of that idea? And I have found that that's a really exciting part of the process. Um, but I think Robert and I both realize that there's a lot of nuts and bolts in this process as well. And that's why we want to make sure that the whole team is involved. One thing that we, I didn't mention in the earlier slides is that uh, in these planning meetings we've had on Fridays, we've talked about some of the campuses getting the fire alarm upgrades through DSA as soon as possible because that's our first hurdle, I should say, or our first ticket we need to get through DSA because that's the first thing they're going to ask for. So I know David started that process and we had a meeting with the fire protection engineer and uh, talked to him about the best way to do those. So um, again, I, my hat's off to Robert for that schedule. We went through it a couple of times, but he did the lion's share and that was not an easy task. So thank you. So we're here for questions and we're looking forward to coming back in April and giving you a snapshot and again in June. All right. That's good questions. I don't have any questions. Um, a lot of work, I can see, and I'm looking forward to when you actually bring something of real substance to us. Not that this isn't. I know you've put a lot of work into it, but I'm, where we can actually dig into it a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It's a good, it's a, I, I, I do have to say, I mean, this is, this is really, a lot of times you get a schedule or a document <laughs> showing a, you know, a, um, your critical path and it's you know gobbledygook and this is this is a you know I'm glad you didn't give us a a, a, a 36 inch wide sheet <laughs> showing <laughs> very yeah I bet it is I bet it is yeah I know you do it, it's easier I'll, to read that I'll way. come visit, I'll come visit you with that one all right thank you okay um We'll move on to uh, item three, in, uh, which is a <coughs> proposed revision to our, our school boundaries. Thank you. At this time, I would like to make the recommendation to the board to take action to include in a revised K-5 boundary street directory the address of 4096 via Real to be placed within the existing address numbers of 3001 through 4600. And so what will happen as a result of that is students who were attending or currently are attending Canalino School because their address is 
in the 4096 Via Real domicile, that number will fall into sequential order, which is in the Aliso neighborhood of 3001 through 4600 Via Real. The reason I am requesting that you consider making this amendment to the street directory is that during this school year, students had been displaced to an extent because of modernization and retrofitting and upgrades to their housing at that location before. We have not accounted for every single student that was current prior in that domicile. Some of them went or are in different schools. They're not necessarily all in Canalino. However, as your superintendent, it is my belief that the students would be better suited by being with their um, peers and their um, neighbors, so to speak, for those that are as close as possible. And since the numbers fall sequentially right within those um, numbers of 3,001 through 4,600, I believe that it would be responsible to include that in the Aliso attendance area. Once you have considered this and deliberated and taken action, my next steps will include pending approval to work with Principal Minier early, as in February, March, to go to the area and have meetings with families there in the evening and help them get excited about the really great things happening at Aliso School that they will be able to look forward to in the new school year. So we want to begin that support and transition early than have it happen to them. We want them to be getting motivated and looking forward to a new school year, and then hopefully other students will return to our schools as a result as well, and they'll all attend Aliso School together. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion? I will move that we approve the revision to the school boundaries as presented. Second. Discussion? Anybody have anything to add? I, I, it makes I, a lot I, of it sense. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just, it, it's congruous and, yeah. and doesn't create confusion. Um, I, I do appreciate, though, your, your thoughts about reaching out and uh, helping with the transition. I think that's a really Certainly. smart I'm honored thing. to do that. Great. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. <clears throat> so we'll move right along to the superintendent's report. Well, thank you so much, and welcome back, everybody. Happy New Year, and Year. Um, this week was fabulous. Our students and staff returned from the three-week holiday vacation, although um, our co-chairs of our safety committee were back at work on Monday, the, I believe that was the 21st, um, with David Winninger, and um, out of the goodness of the heart of a colleague that we met at the CSBA, um, the, she's a coordinator of safety in the San Jacinto Unified School District. On her way through Carpinteria, driving on the 1, 101 to her destination spot, she stopped in the morning and met for a few hours with our team, which they really appreciated. And I'm very, very grateful for their willingness to do that on their own time. And so um, thanks to Jay Hotchner and Barnaby Gloger and also David Winnegar for having that meeting. They will be presenting, they being the co-chairs, um, will be making a presentation to the board on the progress of the safety committee's initiatives uh, coming up soon, so we can look forward to that. And also, uh, we will likely be seriously considering the adoption of Our Zero, which is a program that will help assist in coordinating efforts for safety and a data-keeping resource tracking, which will uh, help us even just in terms of uh, monitoring the monthly fire drills and earthquake drills and also training that's available in that computerized program and keeping track and will help with inventory of um, materials that we may be needing to use for safety uh, matters and so on and so forth. Uh, also, uh, standardized protocols come with the program, and so our team will not have to make them up from scratch, um, but we'll have the latest and updated most current practices um, that are available to us. So we're excited about that. Additionally, our students at the high school returned to school to new lockers, and I want to thank Assistant Principal Ray Vasquez for all of the work that he did um, during the time this last week to assign new lockers to students, and so uh, they look beautiful. I invite you to go over and take a look at them. I'm sure the students are really excited about that. 
with our welcome back and coming back to school, you probably noticed that we have some new procedures at the sites with respect to entrance and exits. Uh, we publicized in the Coastal View, and our principals did a great job getting the word out at the specific communities with their various um, communication methods. We ask everyone's patience and thank you in advance. It is a change. Change is very difficult, and we are doing this for all of the right reasons. It's to help monitor um, egress and ingress better on the sites and um, you know it's going to take a maybe a longer walk or some better planning extra five or ten minutes in the morning or the afternoons for transit however thank you so much for doing that everyone's going to benefit and um, safety is everyone's responsibility and we all have to work together to help each other become more accustomed to these new processes so thank you all for that Last week, I had the honor of being the keynote speaker at the Get Focused State Conference, annual conference here in Santa Barbara, and schools and districts and staff and leaders from the um, United States, but mostly from California, attended. And I was honored. Um, thank you to Trustee Tr Terry Banks and Andy Schaefer for last minute coming to support me. I really appreciated that so much. I was able to speak about the successes of the Carpentria Unified School District that you have supported for years, our principal has led, and certainly our staff um, has been behind that. Special thanks to Erin Hansen and Amy um, Grant, is it her last name? Um, Amy, I'm sorry, I can't remember her last name. She's with us teaching the class. Bryant, thank Brian. you. Bryant. Yes. Amy Bryant. Thank you, Amy. I owe you a lucky llama or something. Um, so uh, they were there as well to be featured and to be uh, viewed as a resource. Uh, it's tremendous. You know, we're known as a flagship school. And so um, we're looking forward to flying the um, flagship flag of Get Focused, Stay Focused. And so look forward to seeing a flag at the high school, hopefully at the district office as well, and um, other great things happening for the wonderful accomplishments of our staff and our students. I shared the stage with Olympic gold medalist Dane Blenton, um, who won in Australia for volleyball. And uh, that was really cool. Um, he's a really tall guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we uh, were able to, he passed around his gold medal. Wow. And and everyone was touching it, and we shared it, and I have pictures. It's pretty amazing. It's really like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so really cool. But he got to share the stage with the superintendent of the prestigious Carpinteria Unified <laughs> School District. And he was nervous. And he was. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> oh, that was a wonderful, wonderful week last week. I want to uh, acknowledge Crystal Productions, in particular Amy Woodworth, who has um, reached out and is offering art supplies to our schools. Uh, so principals are aware of that, K-5, and I will be sharing that also with the middle school and the high school as well. I appreciate Amy, and she's been so generous, and she's made appointments with the principals to come and select uh, materials for the art programs. Okay. In addition, we received uh, through the Carpentria Education Foundation $35,000 by way of a grant, particularly for the general support of the summer academies. Um, so that is greatly appreciated, and thank you to the Carpentria Education Foundation. Um, our office will be receiving the check very soon, and we look forward to putting it to good use. The directors of the La Centra Summerlin Foundation also uh, donated a generous $5,000 in favor of the uh, Carpentry High School to provide assistance with activity fees for the benefit of qualified students. So we're really appreciative of that as well. And um, thank you for allowing me to attend the Superintendent Symposium next in two weeks in Monterey. This is an annual event for superintendents, and it's designed for professional development and networking opportunities. I will not be here as a result um, for the meeting on the 26th. So thank you very much in advance for approving my travel and the um, fees to attend. I'm grateful. All right. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to uh, Assistant Superintendent's report. And Cindy. Well, we've begun the process for... Um, the 2016-17 budget. The governor um, has issued his proposal, and I've had a chance to look at the general components of it. 
the ongoing theme that that revenues are higher than what he projected for this year continues so um, that becomes an opportunity um, and he has proposed again some one-time funding to repay the mandated costs that districts have incurred over the years so right now um, what I've been told is that amount of money, and again, it's one time, so we've been receiving one time money for several years now. Um, it would be estimated at $214 per ADA, which for us is about $459,000. So if that's what ends up being approved um, by the legislature in June, we could expect to plan for an additional $459,000 in one time money. Now, last year we thought we were getting a, it was a quite a bit bigger amount of money, $1.2 million. And then when the budget was adopted, it, part of it ended up being reallocated to a restricted grant for educator effectiveness. So this isn't to say that we're getting it, but that it's um, what uh, Governor Brown has put into his proposal. So um, I was happy to see that because we get that as a basic aid district, whereas the other additional funding that he proposed was to increase funding for LCFF districts, so we don't benefit from that. Um, another proposal he has, which is new, is uh, a block grant where you, they take the funds from the state preschool, other early childhood education programs, and TK, and put it into one block grant and then allocate it somehow based on need using maybe some of the same uh, criteria as LCFF funding. And the reason I think that that's interesting is that we have a chance of getting more money. Right now we get the state preschool funding um, but we are not funded separately for TK because that's part of our regular um, uh, grade span and, and we use our property taxes to pay for that. If in fact he gave us this block grant and if in fact it were larger than what we are currently getting for our state preschool, we will have more money to spend on programs for those students. So. Um, I, f I think it's interesting, of course, nobody really knows how it would work and, and it may not end up being additional money for us at all, but um, it's nice. So that was one of his proposals. In addition, we got some more input from Governor Brown about how he feels about a state facilities bond and um, he's not tremendously positive about it. However, he wants to speak with the legislature and look to see if there's um, some middle ground about it. The, the initiative that's on the ballot is $9 billion. He's reminding everybody that paying the debt service every year for $9 billion is another $500 million to the state budget, and he has been always um, fiscally conservative. So um, he's focusing on that and he's also focusing on the idea that how districts have in the past received money from state bonds um, isn't necessarily the way that benefits districts with the highest needs. So I think there will be discussion about that and while we're preparing to apply for bond funding under the current rules, we need to also consider that those rules may change and um, factor that into our planning. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the legislature about that. And uh, finally, and this isn't exactly related to the governor's proposal, but there's some movement on the extension for Proposition 30 and Brown again had an opinion that it contained a fatal flaw because Proposition 30 as it was being proposed was not allowing for additional funds to go into the rainy day fund according to his formula. So um, no surprise the parties who are proposing this initiative have fixed the fatal flaw and so um, uh, we can expect to see that on the ballot in uh, November as well. If that proposition passes, 
we would continue to receive um, additional funding um, as a basic aid district. So I like that as well. So that's what's in the governor's budget proposal. In the, in the key points, I will be going to um, a workshop, I think it's next week, where I'll have more details. And so I'll be able to bring that uh, back to you. But I think those are the high points for what would impact us. My second item, measure you update, will of course, Micheline already mentioned the lockers, and um, we are very excited about them. They look great. They're the best ever. They're better than, than the ones we had. I mean, even the ones we had that when they were new were not as nice as these. They're just really well constructed. Um, and then the other thing is that Next week on Tuesday at 5.30, we're having our um, Citizens Bond Oversight Committee meeting. So we'll be presenting to them um, really our first report on, on expenditures uh, since the bond has passed. So they now have an official role, which is to review and approve those expenditures. So we'll be doing that next week. I have a question about the the blockers. Was that publicized? Do we take pictures, send it to Coastal View? It'll be in the Coastal View and on Thursday. <laughs> we have photos. We have a press release. Awesome. Wow. So, um, yeah, we, we were really excited. I mean, it's our first real project. What did you do with the old lockers? Should That's an interesting <laughs> story. Um, there's actually metals. some people wanted them. <laughs> <laughs> Some people wanted them. One of our staff people, um, uh, she and her husband were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time when, oh. <laughs> when uh, at the beginning of the high school period, and so they have they have the locker door. I, th I think it's actually one of their lockers, <laughs> and so they cute. have photos of them with their locker, and they, they I think they they they're keeping it. So I you can know, guess it, who that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could probably guess. Um, so um, they had the uh, people had quite a bit of interest in them. <laughs> we should have had um, it. Yes. I, I was thinking about that. That would have been a CEF thing. Yeah. Auction at CEF, yeah. Like some <laughs> art projects. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But we probably haven't gotten rid of all of them. Island auction. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Cindy. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have a comment? We do. We have one member of the public for comment. All right. Uh, Darlene Velasquez. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing Darling. me to come and speak. I've been excited all day, and it's funny how the nerves come as soon as you get here. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, my name is Darlene Velasquez, <coughs> and I have familiar faces in the room. Um, I am here to appreciate the special education uh, experience that I had over the last few months and the people and the players who were a part of that, which was... Um, as most of you know, it's not always an easy process. There's, you know... Con contentious moments and things that you know you don't see eye to eye always so um, it was um, was and is and probably will continue to be a bumpy road but I felt that we were so well um, heard and listened to Kendall Forrester was really really amazing in um, the way she conducted herself and us and our concerns we had um, you know, there's always a story, and our story was one that um, required a lot of different twists and turns and me having to make a stand for my grandson. And Kendall was patient and listened, and she was, I just appreciated it so much. It was a very emotional time for me. And during that time, I also met with uh, Superintendent Micheline, and she was wonderful as well. She took time to listen to me. She heard me and responded to each and every one of my concerns. And I really appreciated that. So um, I meant to say this at the beginning. I, I went to Carpentry School District um, way back to my grandfather was also a, a student here. Oh. And we currently have seven young people in the district, in my family, very close, all cousins. Um, so we're going to be here a while, mm -hmm. and I just want to appreciate all of you and um, the wonderful school district we have, 
and how much work and effort all of you do. And just know that as a parent, well, I'm a grandparent guardian, actually, but um, I appreciate so much uh, Kendall and Superintendent Michelin and the efforts they've made to make me feel that my grandson is being taken care of and um, that he's important. And uh, let me see if I've said everything I want to say. Appreciation all the way around. So we'll start the new year with a bunch of good, positive stuff. So thank you so much. Great. Well, thank, thank you, you for you coming so in and sharing that with us. It's nice to hear. All righty. We'll move um, down the list here to uh, uh, H, Business Operations Facilities and Warrants. Can I get a motion there? I move we approve and ratify the warrants for December 3rd through 17th, 2015 as presented. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, gifts. Um, the board is being asked to accept the following gifts and donations. Uh, item uh, just one uh, is a donation in the amount of $5,000 from the Center Seminole and Foundation in favor of the Carpenter Unified School District Carpenter High School to provide financial assistance with activity fees for the benefit of qualified students. Great. I move we accept the donation with gratitude. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move on to item three, um, which is our developer fee report for 2014-15, which we need to review. Do you want a motion first? Yeah, I think I do, yeah. Okay, I'm, I move that we approve the developer fee report for the fiscal year 2014-15. Second. Okay, now we can have discussion. Any discussion there? No, I don't. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, item four is uh, a resolution. Can I get a motion there? I move we adopt resolution number 16-745, approving the annual report for fiscal year 2014-2015 as presented. Can I get a second? Second. All right, this is a roll call. Alicia? Aye. Jacqueline? Aye. Andy? Aye. Terry? Aye. And myself is aye. Okay. Move on to item five, uh, which is another resolution. Uh, can I get a motion there? I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go down the line. Um, I move we... Um, Adopt resolution number 16-746, resolution authorizing competitive mediation for cabling and or network electronics equipment procurement and implementation per public contract code section 20118.2. I'll second. <laughs> All right. And it, just, just a point of query there. That That's, I'm assuming, for... Um, are upgrades to campuses for, for that type for fiber and other things? Prepared? Yes, <laughs> it is. Um, the plan is that um, we may be able to get E-rate funding for a lot of this these upgrades, which would be tremendous. Um, and we need to go through the process to see how much we'll actually get awarded. So, Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is a roll call. Alicia? Aye. Jacqueline? Aye. Andy? Aye. Terry? Aye. And I'm I. Okay. We'll move on to uh, item six, which is a, another uh, resolution. I move that we adopt resolution 16747, authorizing designated personnel to sign contract document pertaining to the California State Preschool Program. And I'll second. second. All right. Uh, the roll call. Alicia. Aye. Jacqueline. Aye. Andy. Aye. Terry. Aye. And Mike. Okay. Move on to item seven, which is our annual audit from 2014-15. Um, can I get a motion there? Uh, I will move that we adopt the 
or accept the 2014? Oh, oh okay. Oh. Sorry. What, you want to present it first? You want to present it? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I just thought I would say a few words about yes. the audit report. Yes. Um, I mean, we do this every year, so. Yeah. Um, we were just clicking through this. Well, I, I know, but this report is special. Okay, um, but first I just want to say that this audit report is an important part of what um, will be occurring every year when we have the rating agencies and our updates evaluating the financial um, position of the school district. And what is different about the audit report, in addition to the fact that we actually hire people to examine all of our revenues and expenses to make sure that they're correct, is that there's a lot of data in here related to the school district. So there's a whole set of financial statements which are similar in how they report our revenues and expenses by fund and object and and you're used to seeing that. We see that in our budgets. We see that in our unaudited actuals. But there's a whole set of documents in the front which reports the um, district's financial position and operations in a way that's much more similar to uh, commercial enterprises. And so in the very front part, you'll see that there's a, there's a statement of net position and a statement of activities. There's a management discussion and analysis where um, we discuss the changes that occurred over the year. And by the way, I, my job is to write this management discussion and analysis, and it's, um, it's a lot of work. But what I think that you really should pay attention to this year is a very important change. For this year, um, all public agencies are required under um, generally accepted accounting standard board statement number 71, they are required to pick up their share of the net pension liabilities. So as school districts and all the other public agencies, the fire district, the city, if, if we have pension liabilities that are residing, and for us it's at STRS and PERS for our teachers, this is the first year we've had to pick that up as a liability on our books. So if you flip to page five, you will see the statement of net position. If you look at our net position, um, if you looked at 2000, 14, if you look at just kind of comparing the totals, so 2014, the net position was 23,233,000. When you get to 2015, which was the, our last fiscal year, it is $2.5 million. And that decrease is almost entirely due to the, our share of the pension liability, which is $16.7 million. So that's new. And all the rating agencies see that as well. And it's not like people didn't know we had it. It's just never been reported on, on these financials. Our regular operating books don't look any different. We don't do anything with it during the year. But it's added to the financial statements for the formal reporting in this audit report. So it's, it's, a new, it's a new change. And if you're really interested, you can go back and read the footnotes that describe all of that. It's more complicated than just this, but that's the key thing to remember there, is that we now are reporting our liability. Is that the entire liability, or is that just the increased liability? Over the over the over what we were expend our expenditures were before. Well, remember expenditures are on a different financial statement. So the expenditures are in on um, page seven statement of activities. You won't see it specifically outlined, but all of our contributions are what are are going to STRS and PERS every year to pay down that liability. Although the liability increases every year too, because you know people are working and they're accruing more benefits. So the on the financial statements net position, that liability, the 16 million, is our share of what 
would have to be paid to employees upon their retirement from the district. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. So, well, it, it, I, I actually, I actually like the rule because it, 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 it puts it out there so that mm -hmm. it's not just this kind of. It was just floating it, out like there. This ethereal number that mm -hmm. that no one really mm -hmm. knows exists, mm -hmm. and now it, 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 it truly does exist. Well, it's always existed, but but now it's tangible. It, it is. We have always focused on measuring the contributions we make every year, so that's always reported. But nowhere did we. Do, were we required to focus on our liability? And quite honestly, I don't think anyone knew exactly what their share of the liability was until this GASB statement was passed and Sturz and Purse had to calculate each agency's liability. So everyone's had to do that this year. Um, you did a really good job in your narrative. I yeah. think it was really great. I found page it. 11 is my favorite page. Your favorite? <laughs> I think it's my favorite page Yeah, well. because it's <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm> so <laughs> clear <laughs> about all of the increases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from last year. So I, I almost want to like frame this and yeah. have it. Oh, like, that yeah. is so sweet of With you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. It makes it all worthwhile because yeah. I can tell you it is just the most tremendous slog. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can imagine. And I'm doing that all at the same time as we're doing the second, the first interim report and, and all of that stuff. It is a slog every year. It was very readable. I was like, wow, I'm actually yeah. learning stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really pleased you all read it. That's very nice. I, I have a question, though. On page 74, there's a budget for 2016 which says that our, our available reserves is at 11.2%. What assumptions were, were made for that figure? So keep in mind that this budget is for the entire general fund. Mm -hmm. So it's unrestricted and restricted. So we all spent a lot of time just looking at unrestricted right, because right. that's what the state cares about. That's what matters. But for purposes of these financial statements, a lot of the data is combined general fund. And that's the number that CAUSE always looks at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why yeah. I that, want that's, clarifications. That's, <laughs> that's why we, we are always in disagreement on, on what our reserves are. Partly why. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> right. But as far as figures go, that's why we disagree on what our reserve yeah, right. balance is. Because this is a, a public document. This is what is. people that's, that's use what people to refer see to our health, the health of our finances. Yeah. Right. Great. Well, thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Job Cindy. well done. Did we? Okay. We no. So we. So we need to. So we, now we, we have a, we have a motion. To, well, I we haven't have quite motion. finished it, but okay. <laughs> no second. Okay, so we have a motion, she said. Okay. Can I have a second? I second that. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's two of them. Okay, item eight um, <laughs> uh, is uh, the corrective actions for our audit. Um, do you want to present that, or is it? There were only two yeah. Yeah. little like ones. Well, and, I, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize like for my would... rudeness. I'm out of turn. I'm my elbow partner here, Cindy. I was commenting that I have worked outside of our district, and I have seen audit reports. And to look at the finding based on one incident, and then when they checked back because one drew their attention and when they went to look at others they didn't find any it was an anomaly mm -hmm. that they wrote it down as an audit finding i think probably we could celebrate i mean yeah. no this yeah. is really really <laughs> fantastic and even the asb with the receipts exactly before. so let us speak to this smaller. and our corrective action for yeah. the findings yeah no, <laughs> yeah <laughs> they do like asb it, Always. it's easy to find something somewhere that didn't work exactly right because you have so many people doing so many different things with with the money. So um, this particular one was related to the middle school um, and it had to do with the, um, the science camp fundraiser. And so um, the auditors simply couldn't take the deposits and 
relate a dollar amount back to the documentation for that deposit. That was it. That was it. <laughs> and the reason for it was that people were submitting order forms and everything's just sort of rolling through and the money comes in at one time and the order forms come in at different times and they can't do it that way. That, I think that would be the slog as being the auditor. <laughs> now, now be careful i i I'm did sure auditing did. for a I long know. time but you're not doing it anymore are you no i am yeah. not and you are absolutely right there yeah. are some things about auditing that is that are real slog yeah i think you have to have a certain personality to mm -hmm. be an auditor you got to be careful again yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just gonna yeah, say you you're treading on thin ice right now our, we love our auditors. I know we do. I, right? I, no, no, I'm, I, I'm not being the disparaging. The patience of the auditors and meticulous. <laughs> Two findings. Better ask oh, for a motion. Yeah, can I get a motion? <laughs> I'm for, for number eight. Yeah. yeah. I move that we adopt the 2014-15 corrective action plan as presented. I second that. And I have one comment. Yes. I just want to say that um, I agree with you uh, that we can be really proud that we, th uh, these findings are really almost insignificant. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say they are insignificant, but but we're used to seeing these kinds of reports. I've seen these pretty much year after year f um, since Cindy's been here, and so I, I, you know there's been some minor changes that have need needed to happen, but nothing big. And I'm just. I would just want to say kudos to you and your staff that, that does this, keeps track of all the money. <laughs> and the staff especially. Yeah, I agree. They are the ones who are the boots on the ground making sure that everything is happening correctly. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Well done. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Before you continue on to letter I, I would recommend that you continue to review and uh, consider action on numbers one, two, three separately. And then if you'll note from numbers four through eight, yep. you might want to do them together. So. I, I was, gonna, okay. I was going to, but thank you for the suggestion. I have a great tutor here. I Two, yeah. <laughs> Lost well, without her. Well, we both had the same one, so we <laughs> think similarly. <laughs> she made me think I was the special one. <laughs> <laughs> she's, good at, she's good at that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll, further ado. we'll move on to uh, item I in the, our major U item. And um, item one is a contract with, uh, with JMP Electrical Engineering for electrical assessment and fire assessment review at all of our district sites. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I get a motion uh, for that? I'll move that we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item two is a contract with Flowers and Associates for planning and design of construction site investigations at all of our sites. I move that we approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item three is a contract with Simpson Land Surveying for aerial flight lab work and scanning at Aliso, Canalino, and the Carpenter Children's Project at Maine, Carpenter Middle School, Carpenter High, and Summerlin Elementary. I move that we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then item four through eight are contract are are each contracts with Simpson Land Surveying for uh, boundary surveys at all at uh, the following sites: Aliso, Canalino, uh, the high school, Carpenter High School, the middle school, and the and main school. Um, so I'd like to just have someone make a motion for uh, approving all, all the contracts with Simpson Land, Surve Land Surveying Company for those sites. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, we'll move on to board communications. Alicia. Uh, just wishing everybody a happy new year. All right, thank you. Happy new year. It's is no okay. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Terry. Yeah, same thing. Happy New Year and welcome back to, all, to right. all of staff and students. Ditto. All right. Well yeah, welcome back everybody. It was it was 
It was actually got to be like a long three weeks there at the <laughs> end. We are looking for things to do with the kids. Um, but it was fun. It was nice. And I'm glad everyone's back in school. They were all excited this morning mm -hmm. or yesterday morning. <laughs> Parents are excited. Parents are excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't have anything for the calendar. Um, oh, we do. I just President Schaefer, we have been in, uh, reminded and asked to participate in a collaborative board session oh, yeah, with yeah, Santa yeah. Barbara City College and Santa Barbara Unified School District. And the date they have set for us to consider is March the 15th. I do not know the practice, and so as far as the time, you probably know a lot better than I do what has been the standard Usually practice. Usually it's been in the evening. At, at The last two meetings have been at, um, at, at the City College and their Culinary Arts Center, um, and they've, I guess, usually around five yeah, four or five. five. Four or four. something. I don't remember. That's where it was last, last yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. We just sit in the corner and are quiet. That's what we do. <laughs> We're going to speak up more this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. since, since we don't have a, a outgoing superintendent yeah. or no. president, no, we so we yeah. get to dominate. Yeah, we do. Yes. <laughs> we do get to dominate. So, so yeah, just put down fine. like four. 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 Okay. And we'll hear Ish. more. Okay. Yeah. And then there'll be a. a an agenda that gets developed. Certainly. At this time, it's my responsibility to get back with President Dr. Laurie and Dr. Cash. And then I would presume, I hope not incorrectly, that the president will then um, connect with respect to the board agenda as well. And certainly, President Schaefer, um, since our board policy identifies you and I in creating the agenda, if you want to delegate that to me, that's fine. But I would like you to be knowledgeable about what we have on the agenda with the other Correct. LEAs. One thing There's just off the top of my head right now yep. yeah, that I would like to see some follow-up on is, um, you know, we've had some joint meetings with um, a trustee from Santa Barbara City College and a, and a trustee from Santa Barbara High School about um, better transitioning and preparing our high school students for college level um, courses in English and math. And one of the things that was going to happen was there was going to be more collaboration amongst staff. Yep. Um, I know there was discussion about that, but I really don't know where that stands now. And the reason for that is that, it, you know, there's a lot of students that go into Santa Barbara City College that have to take um, – I don't really want to call them remedial courses, but they're, they're courses that they need to take in English and math before they can actually begin the actual college coursework. Yeah, well, I think what, 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 the, what, we, well, what was determined was actually the, the standard at the Santa Barbara City College was higher than that yes. at, the, at the UCs or yes. the, at the, the, the Cal States. And so there, there, there was a disconnect between mm -hmm. um, what expectations. the expectations were from city college versus what we were teaching to with the A through G's and 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 so the the I guess the the mandate or the, the the direction mm -hmm. was that staff at, at the sta the 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 um, department chairs at at the city college would communicate with with the uh, high school sites mm -hmm. within their purview to make sure that there was better alignment. Yes, and, and I don't. I don't know. I don't think we have heard anything. No, and so that is one thing I would like to hear about. I will take that forward. And mm -hmm. while you are speaking, and I'm not sure if this is part of this collaborative meeting, it might be interesting, and perhaps this already is agendized to see the data that reflects when our incoming students assess where they land. So the students from Carpentry High School, for example, the students from our alternative programs, and then the Santa Barbara students as well. And the high, the college has that data, and so it would be they good to look at that, and so I'll request that yeah. um, as and well. And they have shared that, but I don't think we have it updated, okay. you know, since last year. Yeah. So. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Okay. There's nothing else. I would like to adjourn the meeting.
Okay. Are right. you adding that meeting then? Yes. Will you be attending? We, well, yes. It's, it's, yeah. To the best of your like knowledge, it. we will be. <laughs> yes. It's on a different week from our regular meeting, right? Okay. It's it not, is. It's Thank not you. In place right. of. Okay. And then what? The other pieces of that. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Good. No, we don't. We're done. I don't. Okay.